Philadelphia. Sports Live on this great Sunday morning. Uh, it's almost October, man. Almost the end of the year. This year is almost about to be gone. This year went by quick. Uh, Mike is not with us today, so it's just me and uh, Matthew. What's up, Matthew? Uh, not too much, man. Woke up, waking up for another beautiful Sunday morning, ready to get some games going. <laughs> I hear that. Uh, so let's just go ahead and hop right into it. Uh, Want to get your thoughts right away on this uh, Dolphins Patriots? Uh, Patriots have not looked look particularly well this 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 year at all um one and two record they are playing at home dolphins are three and oh leading that division uh i'm sure they're coming in to make some some headways make some noise show people that they are for real um what you what you think happens today well you know have you ever been so passionate about something and you get to the point where it's either make it or break it for that passionate statement well i think uh-huh. this is that uh, I've been on the record for saying, you know, and, and look, look I, I'm not the only guy. It's not like it's the world's hottest take that I say this because it's all over the place. But typically when the when the New England Patriots and the Belichick Brady era start two and two, they finish 12 and four or four, 14 and two. You know, it's just kind of a it's kind of like Christmas. It just happens every year. Uh, but the precedent isn't there if they start one and three. The last time they started one and three. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the year before Brady. So, you know, a lot of things riding on this. If the if the Patriots win this game, they're in the division race. They're back at 2-2. Life's normal. If the Patriots lose this, they fall to 1-3. The Dolphins have a three-game lead on the division, and there's panic everywhere. I, I'm not sure. I know there was rumors of Josh Gordon potentially playing today. Uh, Brady could definitely use that. Uh it is at Foxborough, so that does give me a little bit of comfort as a Patriots fan to say, hey, I think we can pull this off. Uh, however, I, I don't think it's going to be easy. I think we're going to come out. I, I think Tom and that offense is still going to look a little sluggish. That defense is still going to look uh, very flimsy. But I, I do think at the end, uh, Tom Brady can lead some sort of drive, maybe for a Gostowski kick. I think the defense is going to come up with a big stop in the fourth. Uh Tannehill might make a mistake. He might help to contribute to it. Either way, I see the Patriots getting a win on this one. Uh, I'm right there with you. Uh, this is um, – I, sh- I did a show the other day, um, and I said that um, the, 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 the Patriots – this is the Patriots' way. You know, they, they start out uh, slow, and then they always end fast. <laughs> the defense always start out bad, and then eventually, you know – they 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 they're one of the best defenses in the NFL come the end of the year. Uh, this is to me this is familiar territory for the New England Patriots. Uh, you know they always start out slow. So I'm, I'm just like you. I don't see it. Uh, I think this is going to be a win for the for the Patriots. Uh, I think this is where they get back on track. I think with or without Josh Gordon. And also keep in mind going forward, you know next week Julian Edelman is eligible to return uh, to the lineup from his four game suspension. Uh, you know, and then you're going to add that with um, Josh Gordon and, and Gronkowski. Today, even if Josh Gordon don't play, I still see them winning in Fox where I don't think uh, the Dolphins has played some mediocre teams so far. Uh, you know, I, th- uh, I think I did uh, some stats the other day. The teams that, that the Dolphins are playing are like three and three and six uh, on the year. You know, uh, so right now with the only team with a winning record that they that they've beaten so far is the um is the uh the the Miami Dolphins who's three and zero so um I, I'm right there with you I think I think the Dolphins win so let me ask you another question what do you think uh Tom Brady's numbers look like uh because on the season he 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 has been he has been pretty good you know he's I believe he got six touchdowns on the year to two interceptions uh so uh what you look 
what are you expecting from Tom today? Uh, I think Tom Brady sadly could be pretty pedestrian, especially without some of those weapons. Um, I, I, I hate to stop you, Mike, or um, Billy. Can you hear me pretty well? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, my, my phone's going pretty crazy here. You keep telling me I'm on mute when I don't think I am. But <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, no, that's cool. Go ahead. No, I, I'm afraid they're going to look pedestrian. And, and I, the only reason I'm afraid they're going to look pedestrian is, is because I'm a person that I'm not a fan of, of eating crow and hearing people dog my teams. Is it's going to lead uh-huh. to a, it's going to lead to another week of it's going to lead to another week of doubters. Oh, Tom Brady hit the wall. Oh, he's forty. Oh, this happened. Oh, this and this. And and I don't think that's the case. I think Tom Brady's still going to put up. 35, 36 touchdowns of the season. But I think today, divisionally, uh, just early on, still getting in a groove with a weapon. Even if Josh Gordon plays, I think he's going to be like Philip Dorsett was. I know that's a weird comparison. But a couple years ago when they first got him, only thing Tom trusts him to do is run goal routes. Um, <laughs> early on, early on. I think they can pan this out. But um, I, I think his number – one touchdown, one interception type day. Um, so you think this is going to be a grinded out win for the for the for the Patriots today? He, Tom just looks pretty normal, you know. And, I, and maybe I'm doing this for reverse psychology because even if I'm wrong, uh, Tom Brady looks. It great. feels good. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm okay with that. But I just have a feeling, even if we win by, even if we win forty to six, I have a feeling it's going to be like. You know, maybe Tom looks really great between the twenties, and then the run game gets it done in the in the rest. Um, what was the game that against the Colts? That's been the staple. Yeah, that's been the staple, even with Legarrette Blunt. Well, you know, it was, it was uh, Brady will look good, and then boom, you got Blunt there the the finish to drive off. It was the game a, a couple of years ago when the Patriots were playing the Colts, and they had the uh, <laughs> the guy that the gray guy that kept getting cut. You know, Tom Brady looked great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tom, Brady, Tom Brady looked great between the 20s and the 10s. And then as soon as they got in the red zone, that you know, pounded in. Tom Brady, one touchdown, whatever it was that game. So, I, I just see him kind of being lackadaisical with, with some of those red zone passes. And maybe that's what he wants. Maybe he wants uh, – maybe he knows he's got about 12 solid good games in him or 12 Tom Brady-esque games that he don't want to use them right now. And – as we talked at the beginning of the season, I think him and Belichick are okay with losing two or three games in September before losing two or three games in December. And I, I definitely agree you know, with that. We all get older. We're all, it, it, everything we do, you know, if, if you're hooping or you're, you're playing flag football or whatever you might It's kind of like LeBron James. Nobody really care about the Right, season. right, exactly. Because he's only getting judged <laughs> by the postseason. And as he's getting older – you know, Le- LeBron's a, a, a massive athlete. I, I can't even fathom what he, you know, he feels like. But you, you do got to pick your times. And if you're, like you said, you brought up LeBron James. If if you're down 20 to the Pistons in November, we, you let that one slide. But it, Yeah, we're just going to wrap that yeah, one but, up. But if you're in a tie game, game six, Western Conference Finals, uh, maybe you, lap, you lace them bootstraps up a little bit harder and, and go back at it. So I, I think – <clears throat> Sorry. I think Bill and Tom, I, I think they don't really sweat September too much. If, if he comes out with three touchdowns, two interceptions in the month of September, I don't think he's really bothering that. I think he'd much rather – if he's going to have a 10-touchdown month, I think he's always wait. Uh, he's always going to save that till uh, December or, or playoffs or November. I, I definitely agree. Uh, so, uh, moving right along, we got uh, – for – this up uh, the next one we got are uh, the Eagles at the Titans. The Titans have been on a two game losing streak since losing that first game uh to the to the Miami Dolphins. They've won two straight. Uh, the Eagles um the Eagles uh won last week with in Carson Wentz first start. Uh, Philly they got Philly as a three point uh favorite. Um, who who you got on this one? Eagles Titans. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go Eagles. I I just. Mariota's still going to play. Uh, I think he's the starter on this one. I'm, I'm, I'm not sold on a healthy Mariota, let alone, um, you know, one, a hurt Mariota. Yeah, one where he can't feel half of his throwing hand. 
that run game hasn't been everything that they thought they would thought it would be. They're lo- they, I think they lost Rashad Matthews uh, because he wanted some more playing time. Yep, and they just cut him. Yep, <laughs> the, mm-hmm. not, or released him. Not really a, a big – Corey Davis is nice, and, and, and I'm, uh, I, I like what Taylor to – Taewon Taylor brings to the table. But I just – you're talking about the Eagles. And Carson went back, and yes, he didn't blow away the coach, but man, he looked good. He, he looked all right. He looked like he looked yeah, decent. He, yeah. looked, uh-huh. he looked like they made the right decision on holding off on him coming back. Looked like he's he showed no signs of that injury, especially since he's not a hundred percent mobile quarterback. I mean, he does he does get out a little bit, but he's he's fine standing there in that pocket. Uh, I, I, you know, I believe Alshon Jeffries is back. That's another person that. At times, the DBs for the Titans ha- have struggled against. Um, you know, you look, you talked about the Titans' wins. They beat the Texans, but they arguably could have lost that one. Really, yeah. really the, the thing that, and this is how I always said this if you're t- the reason I can't trust your team, just like everything else in trust, is if you have to hide behind magic to win. And when they beat essentially, or they got up on the Texans by Bayard throwing a touchdown. You know that that really tells me a lot. That tells me that you're not going to be able to put up points. The eagle can't. The Eagles can put up points. So I think the Eagles are going to win it pretty easily. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. I think the Eagles win this. Uh, Nick Foles, as you say, he didn't he didn't show any real signs of that injury. I'm sure he was probably a little sore. Obviously, he he hasn't got that kind of real work in a while. But I, I you know I think he looked pretty pretty good last week. And um, I think you know his second game back playing against the Titans who. It's not really that well. They got a good record. They're two and one. But as you said, um, I mean, they they really haven't they really haven't haven't done much. Uh, so and they beat up on the Texans last week, who is who is zero and three. You know, uh, so I'm right there with you. I think I think Carson Wentz have one of those games he had last year uh, to kind of remind people why he was in the MVP discussion last year before he got that that ACL injury. Uh, I I think the Eagles win pretty pretty handily today especially like you say Mariota can't even feel half of his throwing his throwing they didn't even start him last right week. he he only had to play because because the guy got hurt in front of him so um I I I I, I don't see them winning this even even at home I I don't see them coming out with a win let me ask you a question about uh Wentz as I did with Brady though what kind of game specifically are you looking for uh Wentz today I know Darren Sproles is out today uh um, Alshon Jeffers, they got him listening. That's questionable, but I think they say he should be back. So, with most of his weapons back, what do you what do you see from uh, Wentz today? Do you see a three hundred yard game, couple touchdowns? You see, uh, or do you kind of see what you said about Brady? Kind of average game. Well, see, when you're in a, a spot like the Eagles find themselves in, you you know, <clears throat> when you win the Super Bowl, especially with a backup quarterback, you build yourself. At- of credit, you have some flexibility, and much like the Golden State Warriors with the Marcus Cousins, the Eagles are playing with house money right now. They they played better than they should have with a backup after after he won you the Super Bowl. Your mm-hmm. your starter comes back super super healthy, you know, about as healthy as you can coming back from that injury. I think you just need him not to look bad. So I could I could see Carson with 225 yards and one touchdown, no interceptions. I, I think I think they're more keen on how, how's he going to turn the ball over, what kind of hits is he going to take. The Titans, even in their bad years, they're, they're like they're, they're, they're boring. I, I find Titans very <laughs> boring, and the reason that is is because when I watch a Titans game, I have no rooting interest in the Titans. But when I watch a Titans game. It's never high scoring. Their offense never does enough to put up 30. And their defense is decent enough to stop you from putting up 30. So, <clears throat> I think that that's going to be what it is. I think it's going to be an ugly game. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a 17-10 win, a 14-7, 10-3 type thing. Um, I don't think Yeah, Carson this one can be ugly. This one can be th- ugly. I don't think Carson tries to do too much. I don't think he. I don't think he wants to stand in there longer than he has to to make those big downfield plays. I think he's going to do dink and dunks. Uh, the, the 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 Titans do have quick corners who can you know stop or, or at least help alleviate you know eighty yard touchdown passes off a ten yard uh-huh. pass. 
I still say Don't. I, I, I still think Carson's going to be mediocre today. I think, uh, and I think the Eagles are fine with that. But I think he's going to go one touchdown, no pick. Yeah, I think the only way that they go deep. Uh, I mean, maybe Nelson Aguilar can get loose. Uh, he's he's pretty slippery. Um, he, he's he's coming along in that in, in that slot role. And maybe Alshon Jeff is catching a, a deep jump ball. That's but that's the only re, that's the only way that I, I can see them giving up a long pass. Uh, but we're gonna go right up into the Bucks and the Bears. Uh, Jameis Winston was able to return uh, last week um, at twelve o'clock uh, right after that game um, that they played against the Steelers last week uh, last Monday. Um, Fitzpatrick get the start today. Um, <laughs> Against a Bears team who really haven't really showed much, um, in, 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 in my in my humble opinion, uh, outside of Khalil Mack in that defense, maybe and not, and it's really just Khalil Mack, um, if you ask me, um, I haven't seen much out of the Bears, but they are two and one, um, you know, um, facing the Buccaneers, who's also two and one. You see Fitzpatrick getting another four bills tonight, or what you think happens tonight? Well, I think tonight. Or earlier, later uh, on today. I, I think today's yeah. game is, is, is a, a blessing in disguise for the Buccaneers. Because you get – so often as an organization, you have to make a decision for your organization that is going to burn it or build it, and your fans are going to overreact either way. You know, <clears throat> when the New England uh, inevitably goes on from Tom Brady, the fans are going to hate it. Or if, if he throws 20 interceptions and they still keep him, fans are going to hate it. But the, the Buccaneers, there's been rumblings that they've been, been considering moving on from Winston for a while. Mm-hmm. Or, or at least uh, in the last half season or so, maybe in the entire season with his antics, eating the W, getting in some scuffles on the sidelines. Uh, this Uber thing coming up. They've been, they've been wanting to shop around. And, but you got to be careful when you do that with your franchise quarterback because you could lose a large, large amount of your fan base. Well, Fitzpatrick has really played well. And if, if you – I mean, really that, well. And even fact, last week. Yeah, even, with the, three the, second half, yeah, the second half, you know, still putting up 400 yards. Uh, if this game, Fitzpatrick can come out there and put up 300, I think that transition becomes very seamless. It's easy. The fan base says, yeah, we don't want Winston anymore. Because Fitzpatrick's fun, he's mature, he's responsible. He's like, he's like the the the, the dad that yes, he can be fun, yes, he can be cool, but yes, he's going to be a good foundation. He's going to be a good home. Winston's like that drunk uncle. He's fun a little bit, but when you need him to be serious, he's still just trying to be fun. And if they can get behind Fitzpatrick, who can if he can get his own against a, a good Bears defense. I think that's really going to make that easier on the fans. So I think there's a lot of pressure on him to do that. And a lot of people ask, when are we going to see the old fits? And we started to see him against the Steelers, but he came back strong. I'm more, yeah. con- I'm more concerned what's Mitchell's. Because Fitz is 30. He, he's going to have this. He's going to win your game. He he's is gonna, who he is. Yeah, he's going to win he your game. He he's going to lose your game. This might be the game he wins you. This might be the game you lose you. If you're, if you're the Bears, though, what is Mitchell Trubisky's? And I still think that's not decided. And I think this is the type of game where the veteran quarterback, albeit not as talented, not as sought after, says, look here, young pup, this is how you do it. This is how you take a mediocre offense, or this is how you take questionable plays and you turn it into something. I think the, the Buccaneers are going to come away with this one. And uh, the Bears, I, I, I don't see them as contenders. I see them as more of a pretender this year. I, I definitely agree. I think the Bucks win tonight. And, you know, go back on your point about Fitzpatrick. You know, he's, he's like the iPhone. You know, he, 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 he's reliable. You know what you're going to get. It's the same just about every year. Maybe a little minor tweaks here and there. But you know what you're going to get out of Fitzpatrick. And even last week in the, on Monday night when playing against the Steelers, he had three interceptions. But one of those was tipped. The other one. Uh, the lineman come free. He just trying to get rid of the ball. The other one, Mike Evans stops on the route. I mean, neither one of those interceptions, in my opinion, was on Fitzpatrick. I think you get another dose of Fitzpatrick tonight because I don't trust the DBs from uh, Chicago. You know, I know Khalil Mack and Eddie Goldman on that defensive line. I know those boys are big time, you know, uh, but uh, 
the DBs. Who's going to guard Deshaun Jackson D? Who's going to guard Mike Evans, you know, OJ Howard? All these guys are kind of coming into their own right now, and that offense is clicking. And, you know, right now they have the um, – they have the chemistry with with Fitzpatrick, and Fitz is Fitz is making the most out of out of his opportunities. I agree. I think Fitzpatrick come in tonight and he makes about he throws for about three fifty. You know, two two touchdowns maybe, or three touchdowns, one interception. I think he have one of those type games. Um, but but definitely for sure, I think the Bucks win tonight. Uh, and on your point about Mitchell Trubisky, Mitchell Trubisky is I I I watched him at North Carolina, being an ACC guy. Uh, and I, I'm not sure what the Bears saw in him. Maybe they were just drafting the best quarterback, I, I guess, that they thought was available at the time. Uh, but I never I never understood what they saw in Mitchell Trubisky. And it's been showing, you know, for the past two years. Even in their two wins this, this, this year, he hasn't done much. It's been the defense doing everything, you know, uh, in the run game. Jordan Howard has been, you know, absolutely amazing in, in, in the run game for him. So I agree. I think the Bucks win today. Um, I think they go on the three and one, and Jameis Winston continues to, to sit on the bench. Yeah. Um, the only question is, you know, what is, what is Jamie? What 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 is Jameis Winston's future? I yeah, mean, that's what that's what I was about to ask you. He, if, he's, if Fitzpatrick plays well this year, what happens with Jameis? Because we we do know if he's on the roster by March of next year. Uh, they owe him twenty million dollars. So, are, if the Bucks, if you're, uh, if you're, um, I cannot, I can't think of the offense, the the coach right now. Oh, uh, it was his offensive Dirk Cutter. If you're Dirk Cutter in, in in the crew, are you are you willing to keep Jameis Winston on, on the roster because you know he's still a young quarterback. He's still only, I believe, twenty three or twenty four years old. So, I mean, he can still he can still get to where they need him to be. Do you think they waste that twenty million dollars on him? Or go back in the draft next year if Fitzpatrick plays well uh, and go draft the quarterback. To me, I think it all depends on how well Fitz played this year. If Fitz played good this year, I think they can cut ties with Jameis, go look for another quarterback in the draft. I like the kid out of Auburn. I like a couple of these kids. That, I mean, not out of Auburn, out of Oregon. I like a couple of these kids that's, that, that's coming out this year. Masorley, I like the way he looked last night. I mean, who knows what he could be for that Bucks offense. But do you think they get rid of James this year, or do you think they keep him on the roster come March and uh, give him that 20 mil? Look, I, I was joking around with a friend the other day, and to be good in the NFL, it takes gut, luck, and bucks. And, huh. well, the reason what made me think of it is we was watching that Thursday night game, and my buddy, he's a Titans fan. And I was like, you guys could have had Jared Goff. You guys could have had Carson Wentz. But you don't. You got Marcus Mariota because they had that number one pick and they traded it to the Rams. Yep. And if you would have had the guts to pull it or the, the, the intuition or the luck to think that golf could be better than Mariota, you could be sitting there with that quarterback. Now, me and you do differ on golf's potential and his ability, but if golf is what a lot of people think he is, the Titans could be in a whole different situation right now. Or the same for wins. You know, they could be in a whole different situation right now. Right now they're looking yep. for futures. And the same goes with the Buccaneers. Do you think you can replace Winston? I mean, that $20 million has to go somewhere. And I don't think it's at Winston. So I don't think you can afford to pay him. I think you're going to get the, the, the chances of you getting someone else for substantially cheaper outweighs you paying Winston twenty million. You know, if, if uh, Winston's guaranteeing you twenty touchdowns and ten interceptions for twenty million dollars, that's averaging to a million dollars a touchdown. I think you can get that value somewhere else, or I, in a young quarterback. Right. I think you can and get, get a some young, more playmakers. Exactly. A running back. You can get a young quarterback. Pay eight hundred thousand, and he can probably still get you twelve touchdowns, ten interceptions. So now, now you got essentially nineteen million dollars left to cover eight touchdowns. I think that can be done in the NFL, whether it be with with signing a, uh, a Le'Veon Bell. Uh, that would be huge. You know, uh, that would be huge. A playmaker, or or a, a 
help add to that defense that's going to make up. Maybe you get you a top a top tier corner or a top tier safety that's going to take you four touchdowns off the board. I think that's what they're missing. I, I I honestly think that that's what they're missing. They're missing they're missing a guy on the edge that that can shut everything down because in every level in every level they they have one of those one of those type players. You know, uh, the uh, the the Buccaneers that is. Yeah. They have they they have one of those players at the defensive line position. They have one of those players uh, at linebacker. So I think right now the only thing that you're missing is you know a cornerback or a safety you know to 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 secure that back end. So I definitely agree. I think Winston I, to me and it hurts my heart being that he's from uh, that he's a Seminole. But I think you're I, I think you're absolutely correct. I think you have to because it is not really about the the play on the field with Winston. It's about can he mature enough to to um to be what you need a franchise quarterback to be and that's not get suspended for met for touching girls inappropriate in an Uber. You know, that that's not what you want your franchise quarterback to do. So for me, I I, I will be out on Winston. I will not pay that that twenty point eight million dollars or what it twenty point nine, whatever whichever one it is, that's that's gone. But well, moving. Well, two Go two quick points on that. One reason uh-huh. you got to move on from Winston in, in today's climate in 2018. You know, we don't really talk political or talk, uh, you know, outside of sports too often. Or, or, but in today's climate, it's not. You know, Winston could wake up today and say, you know what, I want my job back. I want that money. I realize I'm blessed to have this. I want to be a perfect individual. He can be a perfect individual moving forward. But like in today's time, nothing is secret. And if he did something else at Florida State, if he did something else his rookie year, that's going to still bite him. So he can wait. It's not about when's he going to grow up because he could wake up today and say, I'm a perfect citizen, and he can do everything right. He can be the Peyton Manning of the NFL moving forward. And if he still has these negative things in his it's not going to matter. And I'm not saying he does, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, opening up that can of worms. But you know, it's in today's time, and especially someone with the history of Winston, it's not even about can he turn it around. It's what else is it? What else is back there? And and it doesn't even have to be something real serious. If it's Winston, he could have. If it's Jameis Winston, he could have been texting a girl too much. Maybe there was a girl in college who wasn't interested in him, and he sent her 500 texts. Not illegal, bit creepy, but not illegal. And because of his past, it's going to come across with with a, in a certain way. He doesn't get that leverage anymore. He's almost like Ben Roethlisberger. When Ben Roethlisberger still gets, you know, something came out over the summer, uh, uh, another thing in his past, he loses that credibility, and it, every little thing just keeps hurting it even more. Uh, I, I I definitely agree. I think I think what he's done now uh, is definitely going to go with him forever. But let's just go ahead and move on to the Lions at the Cowboys today. Um, neither team, neither one of these teams has looked particularly great, um, over the, uh, since the start of the year, um, you know, both teams are at one and two Dallas is playing at home at Jerry world. Uh, what you think happens today? Uh, Matt Patricia, you, you, do, do you think he gets it together or do you see a Cowboys win today? I, don't ask why. Don't ask how I'm not a Cowboys <laughs> fan. I actually, I actually really, really don't like the Cowboys, but I see them winning. I just see them. So the Lions appear to try to do too much. They, the Lions appear to, with, with Jim Bob Cooter having the greatest name in the NFL <laughs> and being an offensive coordinator, I feel like he has a million plays. And when you have a million plays, the odds of calling the wrong one are pretty good. I feel like the Cowboys now know they got about 10 plays and six of them are to Zeke. I was just about to say, and I was just about to say, and about seven or eight of them is just hand the ball off to 21. Now, that's not going to win you a Super Bowl. It's not even going to get you to the playoffs. But I think it is going to beat a team like the Lions. And I just... I just don't know. I, I think it's going to be – if I'm, I, I don't, I've not even looked at the schedule, dude, but I can already know it's going to be a Troy Aikman, Joe Buck game on Fox around 4 o'clock. I already know 
I didn't even look at it. I, I just know. And I can just see Dallas winning 14 to 13, 14 to 10. It's, it's not going to be a pretty game. It's going to, it's, it's going to be a game that gets the Cowboy fans talking way too much, but it shouldn't. They're going to win, but I wouldn't put much into it. I'm I'm right there with you. I think I, uh, as much as I hate the Cowboys, it pains me to say, but uh, I think so far me and you are a perfect uh, what uh, four for four um, on these picks. Uh, I'm also with the Cowboys on this. I do not trust Matt Stafford in that offense. Uh, I do not trust the Lions, period. I do not trust the Cowboys at all either, but they do have Ezekiel Elliott, who I think is at least top two back in all of the NFL. Um, and I think you're going to see a heavy dose of Zeke today. I mean, a heavy, heavy dose of Zeke. Uh, that Prescott, man, in his last, I believe, you know, 10 or so games, he's only he's only thrown for, t- for over 200 yards in about two of those games, uh, with his last, I believe, five or six being under 200 yards. Uh, so, I mean, I, this this is prime game for Zeke Elliott. Uh, I like that defense. The Cowboys defense has been playing really well this year. Uh, I mean, really, really well. They're, Sean Lee is not going to be there. Uh, but I like the rest of that defense. They've been playing lights out. So I definitely agree with you on this one. I think the Cowboys uh, win this one. I, I don't even know uh, what kind of score we're going to get out of this. Because neither team offense has been particularly great. Neither team on offense has put up crazy points this year. So uh, I think it's going to be one of them grind them out games. But I think the Cowboys get get the uh, get the win. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Now going to the Sunday night game, we got the Ravens at the Steelers divisional games, uh, AFC North uh, division rivalries here. Uh, Joe Flacco against Big Ben. Um, Steelers, Steelers, Steelers got their first win of the season last Monday night against um, the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ravens are two and one. The Ravens have really surprised me this year, but I do expect the Ravens. We talked about the Ravens being that, and that's out of the playoffs come the end of the year. Uh, what you see, this, what you see tonight uh, from the Steelers and the Ravens? Uh, so the Steelers, the Steelers are really good at what they do. But I don't know if what they do is sustainable for the entire season. Without Le'Veon Bell, they're really good at throwing the ball and getting the ball in Antonio Brown and Juju's hands. I just don't know how long that's going to last. And if they can do that well, if they can if they can distribute the ball, get in the end zone a lot, I don't think the, the, the Ravens have near the firepower to do that. And if I think if... If the Steelers can do it tonight, I think that tells me the Steelers are going to win the division. If the Ravens shut them down, if that defense is legit and that and that defense gets some stops, and Joe Flacco can put up twenty on top of the on top of the defense getting those stops, I will then concede and say, I don't know if the Ravens are going to win the division, but I think the Steelers are done. It is hard for me to go against history when I see, you know, history repeats itself. Uh, you know, I see these loops year in and year out. These teams, you got t- teams in a bubble that are starting bad, and boo, they're horrible, and guess what? They're going to win their division. Your Patriots, your Steelers are in there. Uh, I-, I would even say the same for the Eagles. And then you got these teams that start off 2-1, and 3-0, and oh, and then we're going to laugh when they finish 4-12. and 12. Your Dolphins are in there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know the about Reds your Ravens. sometimes. The Reds, yeah, exactly. You know, they, they start four and two, and then they end up eight and eight. I got the Steelers winning tonight, but if they don't, that could this could be a, a changing of the guards in that division. Um, I, I, I think I agree with most of what you said. I'm still going back and forth on the game pick. I don't know who, who yet, so I'm going to make that up on the fly. So, going back to what you said, right now, the Steelers' defense have been god off. I mean, absolutely atrocious. It has not looked great. Fitzpatrick put up four bills. Uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes looked like he, like he was playing against the scout team. And the Browns should have won that game, you know, if Tyrod Taylor didn't go 15 or 40 in, in that game. Um, 
I think Joe Flacco is a is 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 better than 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 Tyrod. I think he's better than Fitzpatrick. So I'm looking for Joe Flacco to probably have a pretty good game against that secondary. They they have not played well all all year. Now the one thing that's been keeping the Steelers in all of these games outside of Game One is Big Ben' ability to throw the ball. He he's he's been having to do everything for them. You know, four four touchdowns here, five touchdowns here, 400 yards over here. You know, um, without Le'Veon, like you said, what the offense that they're running now is not is not sustainable. You cannot expect Big Ben to do what he's been doing over the past three weeks every single week. You know, it just doesn't work. You know, you're gonna have you're gonna have to have some sort of a running game. And outside of Week One, James Conner has looked about it as expected as what everybody probably thought that he would look. Uh, you know, I hear that they're at now. They are actively shopping Le'Veon Bell uh, as as we speak. Uh, you know, so it uh, looks like his time is done in Pittsburgh. But I think I agree with you. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers get it done today. Uh, save their save their chances of winning that division because if they lose today, I don't think they I don't think they have enough to get back got a tie within the division so that's one game down that they already done lost and then you lose to the um you lose to the ravens now you're already two games back in that division with with a worse record because now uh the ravens are three and one and then if the Bengals win today they'll be three and one so i, I don't think the steelers can afford to lose today uh so for for that reason that reason only that i think that they can't afford to lose i think they're gonna play like they can't afford to lose and i think the steelers win tonight as well so we're gonna move on into the uh monday night game uh chiefs at broncos pat mahomes has been absolutely i mean amazing 13 touchdowns zero interceptions the broncos are two and one case keenum uh has played borderline decent uh but who you got tonight uh i mean on monday night chiefs and broncos you know I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. I, I I think I don't think Mahomes' madness is going to is going to keep up in the sense that they go 16 and 0 and he throws for 60 touchdowns. But I, I do think there is a lot of you know this was a pretty this was a playoff team in the Chiefs last year, a pretty solid squad. Uh, they just upgraded greatly at the quarterback position. He, he's a solid passer. He's got. Um, Really great weapons all around him. Of course, there's Hill, there's Kelsey, there's Watkins, there's Conley. He's throwing to to the other guy out there too that I don't even know, Kareem Hunt back there. <laughs> I mean, I, I I believe he broke the record for the most different. Yeah, he threw the like six different touchdowns, he, right? I, 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 yeah. Well, I think he's got nine. I think I think he's oh true, nine true was, total. Sammy true, total, Watkins yeah. was the ninth one. I, I don't That's like true. I said. I don't see him coming out there and throwing for six touchdowns tonight. But I think he's going to do enough to get the job done. I think he's going to – he actually isn't even in the top five. You know, he's, I think he's leading the league in passes. But he's not even in the top five or six in yardage. So that means he does a lot of his work in the red zone. Yeah, he only has uh, 896 for the year. So I think when, when you play like that, that always lends itself to a one to two touchdown game <laughs> performance. He's shown you he doesn't really turn the ball over much, so that's not a concern to me. I think the Chiefs are going to win. I think it's going to be fairly close. But I, even though the Chiefs or the, the Broncos has have a pretty good pass rush and, and a pretty solid defense, I just don't trust Keenum enough to keep up with Mahomes on this one. And that's 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 exactly uh, where I'm leaning at. I, the Chiefs win this game just based on uh, – it's Case Keenum against Pat Mahomes. I mean, no matter really how you look at it, I think that de- Denver defense is good. You know, Von Miller, obviously we know we know what Von Miller can do. Uh, but I'm right there with you. The Chiefs defense has been horrible, but it's Case Keenum. I mean, you know, he he's horrible on the year. Um, he's 66 of 108, 743 yards, three touchdowns, five interceptions. I'm looking for him to throw a few more interceptions today because that's the type of quarterback he is. Uh, I – to me, I see Pat Mahomes throwing about three touchdowns today for about three, four hundred yards. Um, Kareem Hunt really haven't got going so far this year. You know, he he he's only had fifty-two carries. 
uh, for 168 yards and two touchdowns. I'm looking for him to kind of get going into that offense today uh, to get into the fold. Tyreek Hill has been absolutely amazing. He got three touchdowns on the year. Uh, but Pat Mahomes, I'm looking for him to take care of the ball. I don't think he throws another. I think he throws one interception today uh, to boost his total up. I think on the year after this week, uh, he's 16 touchdowns, one interception. But I got the Chiefs winning this game as well. Uh, but uh, let's. Uh, that's gonna be it for the game picks. Let's do some rapid fire picks real quick. Uh, uh, Browns, Browns at Raiders. Uh, Jim Gruden, zero and three. Uh. Uh, um, Baker Mayfield, first official start as the Browns quarterback. Who wins this game and why? Raiders, Browns, uh, Mayfield comes back down to reality. You, oh, so you got the Raiders winning? Yep. Okay, I got the Browns winning. I don't think that offense is Raiders. I don't think they're doing well. Derek Carr has been less stellar. I, I think the Browns get the win. Let's go uh, Jets at Jags. Um, does uh, – Sam Darnold bounce back today, or, or do that defense humble him down? I think he has a decent game, but the Jags defense is just too much. Probably throws a late interception to Ramsey. Uh, I see Bortles playing pretty decent. I got Jags winning. Yeah, I got Jags winning as well. Uh, you know, just a combination of that defense. Uh, I just don't think – and me, I just don't think Sam Darnold is who a lot of people think he is. I think he had a mediocre game with a couple picks today. Uh Bengals at Falcons. The, the 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 Bengals are two and one on the season. Falcons really haven't looked particularly well. Uh, they are one and two on the season with the loss to the Eagles, and then last week the loss to the Saints in overtime. They've only beaten the Carolina Panthers so far this year. Who you got? But Matt Ryan has played absolutely amazing. Uh, l- let me just throw that in there. He's played absolutely amazing. Who you got? Uh, Bengals. Bengals. Falcons. I think Matt Ryan and his newfound friendship with uh, Calvin Ridley pays off here. I think the Falcons win and win pretty easily. Uh, I definitely agree. I don't. I don't see what's been taking them so long to get Ridley involved in the <laughs> offense. It, uh, honestly, uh, but uh, I'm sure Matt Ryan is happy that uh, that Arthur Blank uh, drafted Calvin Ridley uh, in, in the first round out of Alabama. I think the Falcons win as well. Seahawks at the Cardinals. Uh, Josh Rosen. Uh, his first his first official start. He came into the game last week on that last drive uh, to try to win him. He threw a pick. Uh, what you think happened today, Seahawks at, Car- at at the Cardinals? I think the Cardinals are just a mess. The Seahawks struggle, yeah, but I think they're they're pretty good at knowing who they are. I got the Seahawks winning. Uh, I'm I got the Seahawks winning as well. I just don't think the Cardinals got enough on offense, honestly. Uh, and then I know Earl Thomas has been a absolute monster. Uh, I think Russell Wilson have a have a pretty good day against that defense today. Uh, Saints at Giants. Saints two and one. Giants one and two. I think this is a must win for the Giants season. This is my NFC East pick, so I, I'm definitely uh, I, I'm in dire need for them to win today. What do you think happens today in uh, in um, in uh, New York? The Saints have a god awful defense, but man, that offense has looked amazing. I think uh, the Saints win pretty easily. I think I think the Giants get going. I think Barkley has a nice game. I think Odell has a nice game. But I just don't think there's enough to keep up with what to say. If if the Falcons offense couldn't outscore the Saints, the Giants sure aren't either. <laughs> I'm only going to pick the Giants because, like I said, this was my NFC East pick, and there's no way that they – can start off one and three and win that division. Uh, especially we we both got the Eagles winning today. They are two and one. That'll push them to three and one. Uh, they they can't afford to lose this game today. Um, I'm going with the Giants just strictly off because this was my NFC East pick uh, and nothing more than that. <laughs> so uh, we got the Bills at the Packers. Bills finally won their first game last week. They actually look pretty decent uh, against um, against Minnesota. Uh, the, you know, and 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 and, and that win. Uh, who you got winning this? Quickly giving me Josh Allen versus Aaron Rodgers, and I'm always going to take Aaron. <laughs> at least right now, I'm going to take Aaron Rodgers in that one. Packers. I I definitely agree. I think uh, that's what it comes down to. Uh, Josh Allen. Green, but uh, now they I did hear that they put uh the Packers put Muhammad Wilkinson, I believe it was, on IR for the year, so that's another guy on that already. Okay, I got you back. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, I was just saying, I uh, I did read that they had lost Muhammad Wilkinson or something like that, they put him on IR to already terrible defense, so um, 
but I'm with you. I got the Packers on this one. Uh, I think the Tom Brady's going to be too much. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is going to be too much for that Bills defense and that offense. Uh, another game we got here. We got the the Texans at the Colts. Uh, Texans are are zero and three on on the year. Uh, winless. Um, against the uh the Colts, Andrew Luck hasn't looked particularly bad, but he hasn't looked particularly good either. Um. This is one of the teams that we talked about last week that could be in services for Le'Veon Bell. Uh, what you think happened, Texas, Texas, Texans coach today? Um, <clears throat> Andrew Luck gets it done at home in front of their fans. Deshaun Watson looks pretty good on the turf, but Colts get it. Colts squeak it out. Uh, I'm with you. I think the Texans right now are in a in a really, really, really bad spot. Uh, they don't know really what's going on here. Colts are at home. That should be good enough. I think the Colts win this game. And uh, for our last pick of the day, um, 49ers Chargers. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo is gone for the season. Uh, that's been well documented. Chargers is one and two. They haven't really had the start to the year that I that I thought they would have. Uh, I thought they would be better right now. Uh, who do you think win this game? 49ers Chargers. Uh, Chargers. I mean, Phillip Rivers, you still sure got him. The 49ers are a mess now. Uh, they had they were going to be the poor man's Packers, uh, and by that I mean they were going to make the playoffs, but they were going to have enough firepower to win some games based on Jimmy Garoppolo alone and then hoping that you had to throw to compete with him and then they were going to pick you off. All that's gone. Um, I don't even know what their options are at quarterback moving forward. Uh, so I have Phillip Rivers. Somehow I, I think the Chargers are going to find a way to keep them in the game. But uh, Phillip Rivers are going to win this one. I, I, I'm, I, I'm right there with you. Uh, I think, you know, also Jimmy G. I think even if Jimmy G was there, I would still pick the Chargers uh, for this game. But definitely no Jimmy G. Uh, I'm definitely out on the 49ers. Uh, Chargers get it going today. This could be one of those wins that could kind of get them started. Melvin Gordon, I mean, Keenan Allen, they, 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 they have all the tools. Derwin James has been playing absolutely amazing on that back end. For them, I, I honestly don't see how they're how they're one and two, but they are the Chargers. And you said it at, at the beginning of the year. Whenever there's Phillip Rivers, you can count on him to do something stupid at the end of the game when they need a win. Uh, I'm, uh, so, but today I got the Chargers winning this game. Uh, that's going to be it for today. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to RTL Sports Live. You got anything before we get out of here, Matthew? No, nah, just to sit back. Hope your fantasy team does good and – Let's get this great day started. Right now, my fantasy team is not doing good, so uh, I need a little luck uh, in there. It seems like every week that I have a chance to win, somebody either gets hurt or they don't even perform. Like last week, I'm thinking Tom Brady is going gonna, is gonna to just do work. He gets 12 fantasy points. I got Kirk Cousins sitting on the bench. He gets 54 points. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That, that always seemed to happen. But I thank everybody for tuning in. Make sure you tune into the RTS Sports Live our new time on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 11 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time on Sunday, the same time.